Jador Sanders, he was in class and apparently was on IG Live during his first lecture at Colorado. Do we got video footage of this? Let me pause that. Pause that. Let me ask you something. Is this before or after? So I can get some context because I'm going to take, I'm going to be a hater because like you cannot show anything on the JB show with Big Smitty about Colorado or Shadur Sanders. I can't talk to Matt about it. Can't talk to fucking nobody about it. Or I'm a hater apparently. Mm. So let's just be clear here. Um, is this before Dion addressed the class? I mean the team about classroom behavior, Ooh. or is it after? Now See, the video is thirteen hours old. It was posted on on Shador's YouTube yesterday. That's when it was posted, but that doesn't mean that's when it was filmed or recorded. So there's really no wait, way wait, to wait, know wait, when wait, it was wait, it was recorded. Wait, 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 wait. It was posted on what? Shador's YouTube yesterday. Shador has his own YouTube channel where he makes money. It was posted then. So Shador Sanders posted that video that I just watched earlier this morning that was sent to me. I don't know if he posted it or his YouTube person, whoever. Somebody posted on his channel yesterday. Yes, that is correct. It was posted then. So we're not going to claim ignorance, though, that it was on. He posted it on his YouTube channel. That is it. That means I want it out there on my channel regardless. Right. You're the head of your channel. Right. Yep. Whatever goes on here, it's between you and me, right? That's not nobody in the chat can put a video in here. Yeah. So I'm trying to figure out why would you put that on your YouTube channel if you don't want it out there? But yet, when I talk about him and I talk about this program, I'm the hater. Like, Mm. let's talk about. So there's some quarterbacks in the in, a, in in the college football right now that deserve more that deserve some talking. Um, one of my former kids just was with his father the other day, Nico at Tennessee. Um, he got good amount of money for NIL. Um, I haven't seen any any crazy videos of him. Have you lately? Uh-uh. All right. Um. I haven't seen that. Jackson Dart, he got a private jet deal on the NIL. Mm. Um, trying to figure out, okay, but I haven't seen like no stupid craziness. Like, I haven't seen him flossing or doing no shit. He got an NIL deal with it. So I'm trying to figure out what quarterbacks out there are every day in the limelight. That's all I'm trying to figure out because apparently I can't talk about him without being a hater, but this. This will, I'm sure, be shown on other people's shows today. Um, this, this, this clip that we're going to show of him in class, everyone's probably seen by now. I'm just trying to figure out, like, I, I, you address the team, you address the team, talking about classroom behavior. What, maybe it was after this, but he posted it on his channel yesterday. I'm just, I'm just trying to figure this out, dog. It, why are you continuing to put your daddy, the head coach, in this limelight that he mm. has to constantly defend with this target on his chest? Why are you putting your daddy on constant eggshells defense mode when he has to now defend the rest of the team to the public to say, yeah, I addressed my team about classroom behavior? Your son is live in a lecture on IG Live, pumping it up as if it's the cool thing to do. Mm. I, I'm trying to figure it out. Am, am I wrong? The timing was bad. Go ahead, show it. Let's see it. That's, yeah, yeah, let me let me Two. watch it. And sodium chloride when I'm done. And in sodium chloride, I have NH plus and Cl minus. Solid phase. It's just in the aqueous phase, it's NH plus and Cl minus. When I go over to solid and aqueous, if anything is written aqueous, there's water around it. You gotta remember that. Because sometimes water does things for us. The equation is often referred to as the molecular form of the equation. For electrolyte and the sodium chloride. Again, with the 110 and 8 plus 5 is 13. <laughs> neutral sodium. And that's not true. It's sodium ions with a plus one charge. No free He's laughing and shit. I, listen, 
The whole class yeah. laughing. You know, you just yeah. Kids, I mean, kids it's, fuck up. Kids fuck up. There's kids. I've had tons of kids in class that's fucking done dumb shit, right? But yeah, Smitty, we got to stop defending the fact that he has the respect level for his father, his team, and here. Let me let me break it down. Let me let me say. It. Yeah, break it kids. down. I'm gonna let you go. I'm gonna let you go. go ahead, we got down. kids that fuck up. We've been doing this. Uh, fuck up. We've always had classroom behaviors. You've seen my rants and videos at my kids. Yeah. So kids are going to be kids. Here's the issue, though. Nobody, see, we put this pedestal, we put this target on our chest. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing. This is not, and I got to be clear here, that anyone that played the sport or coached it, and if they don't agree, then they're just idiots and they don't understand the profession. Damn. There is zero let me put let me make sure I'm clear here. I'm you gotta say this right because you led you said if you don't agree with this, you an idiot. So this gotta be like oh, yeah. the Bible well, that, right that's, here. That's sticking, that's the guarantee. This gotta be like perfect statement then. You are not a receiver, you're not a corner, you're not a D lineman, no offense, you're not an O lineman, you're not a guy that really, if you walk into Walmart and without a helmet on, they recognize you. Meaning one of the old linemen at Colorado walks into Walmart, I'm sure, unless he's really from Boulder, nobody knows who the old lineman is. Nobody knows who the D lineman is. Nobody probably knows who the Mike Backer is if he took his helmet off walking down the street. None of you will probably recognize him unless you really follow Colorado's YouTube channel. I don't know. Here's my point. There is nowhere in a quarterback's job description that – Allows for, requires, or should be defended that behavior. Not in a quarterback's job description. That's just not what we did. Not what we do. Why do you think that the leader of the team, who is the one of the figureheads of college football right now as we speak, being the son of one of the most iconic football players of all time who's now a coach why would you ever defend the fact that this cat is constantly on videos doing something that we make a video about we're only making a video about him smitty because it's there to make mm -hmm. a video about if he didn't do this we wouldn't even be talking about it today and i bet i'm sure there's a million shows today that's going to show this video of him so then he posted on his YouTube telling me, as the quarterback, you have zero regard for reading a room. You cannot read the room. You're the quarterback. You're not the fucking running back. You're not anybody else. You are the quarterback. There's, there's no – in our job description, Smitty, when I give out a quarterback manual, mm -hmm. NFL, college, high school, we don't miss class. You're a quarterback. You sit in the front row. You're the quarterback. Mm. Motherfucker's buried in the middle of the big ass lecture hall. Why are you in the middle of the lecture hall? Like, it's like you're a, it's like you're a, 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 a just a shitbird regular kid. Like you're just a regular cat. Nobody knows. You're like a shit third string receiver. <laughs> like, mm. no, homie, you're a fucking Shadur Sanders. You set the tone. There's no room for being late. There's no room for failing classes. You're the quarterback. There's no room for missing practice, weights, not being first in everything, not being first in there, not being the last one to leave. You are the quarterback. It is different. And the money and the market in the NFL tell you that you are different mm. because you are the highest paid person in the world. You are the highest paid and most popular position in the world. You are the one that's the GOAT or the hero. You are not just some regular random slap dick wide receiver or some cornerback. You're the quarterback, the leader, the premier guy. You're supposed to be number one quarterback in the draft, according to certain people on this show. How do you continue to do that? Display those behaviors and then put it on your channel so now your dad's going to take the heat because he's the head coach son and he's your dad as well. So there's a there's a there's a double what do they call that? Double ass sword. Double conundrum double a uh, uh, fuck what's the word? But anyway, you're now you're you're now talking about your dad 
slapping him across the back, backhanded slapping him, and the quarterback as your coach. So he's your daddy and your coach, and you're basically putting him in this, uh, in Tandre, yeah, you're basically putting him in this trick bag. I mean, no, there's no question about it that you're putting Dion in a trick bag as his son and quarterback. I'm trying to figure out why, if we talk about it, am I going to be a hater today on social media? Well, you said that very well. I'm actually not going to disagree with what you just said. Um, there is a different standard for quarterbacks. I mean, I, I played the game in mean, high school, but especially college level, for sure, college level is a different standard. You know, our, my quarterback for the first half of my career was Keith Winning. You know, got drafted to play in the NFL for a little while. Um, different standard. He's got, He's out there throwing passes after practice. He's there early. He's a cat who, at least when I was there, never got in trouble. Now, again – he still hung out with his teammates. He still, you know, had some drinks and party with his teammates and his people. He was a part of the team for sure. It wasn't like he was holier than thou, but when it came to like taking care of business, he was a guy, you never had to worry about him failing a class and not being able to, you know, be like all the, all the little things that you just got to do. You don't have to worry about that from him. You know what I'm saying? So I do agree that there is a certain standard for quarterbacks that's separate from everybody else because like, let's be real. The position is the most important position on the field. So we can't, we need somebody who has a different maturity level, a different level of focus, et cetera, to lead these other men. So I get that. Um, and again, I'm not, I'm not defending. I think it was, it was a bad, it was a bad timing, bad decision. Cause again, I don't know when the actual filming took place, but the fact that it was posted yesterday is like, damn bro. Like <laughs> your daddy just got done like ripping ass, you know what I'm saying? In the team meeting. And then you, you just still post it. You said, fuck it. I'm posting it. That's it's like, my dang, point. Like, that, that's, that's my the point. bigger thing. I don't care about the actual action, honestly, because again, me being from a player standpoint, me being a student, like sometimes those big old lecture halls, man. You know, you just being a kid. That's just, that's just, I don't know. That's just part of it. But the actual decision to post it, it's like, dang, bro. Like that, that it's just like you don't, you don't even care. You know what I'm saying? So. I, like I, I, like I want to, I want, like I want to make sure we're proactively thinking this out because the haters will come after me for saying that I'm a hater. So I yeah. want to be clear. Oh, they they coming <laughs> regardless, yeah. JB. You it's posted, not about it. you posted this yesterday on your YouTube channel. Your daddy has a viral video of him addressing the team about classroom behavior, locker room mannerism, locker room discipline, trash everywhere, lockers being left unattended. And then you post it. I just don't see it, dog. I just don't see it, bro. I don't see it. Tom Brady, for a reason, talks to this kid about leaving the other outside noise away and becoming a quarterback. It's on video. We've seen Tom Brady on IG Live and Shador talking to him and saying, man, fuck all that shit with the Bentley and all that. Get into the lab with your pen and your pad. Right. Like, go get your bag in the manner that it's supposed to be getting NFL quarterback. Is that what you want to do? Or do you want to be a YouTuber? My career is over, Smitty. We do a show now. I do a show. You're much younger. You're going to, you're going to have many careers ahead of you still, because you never know. You're still 30. I'm 48. Nah, so I'm this, chasing. This is it for me. I'm chasing. Uh, I'm chasing retirement now of some sort, whatever yeah. that may be. This kid's goal. I, from everything I've read, is he wants to be an NFL quarterback. He wants to be better than Tom Brady is what he said out of his own mouth. Yeah. This ain't, this ain't, I don't see this behavior being conducive for you being better than Tom Brady. First of all, you're not. But second of all, like, this is, this is, I get that cringe vibe, dog. I'll be honest with you. It's, it's about, it's about like, me, 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 look at me doing what I do. I want to be this clown. You're the quarterback, homie. I just don't see it. If you disagree, go ahead. I do not see any other. There's just not a, a place in our job description that that allows us to do anything other than be the guy, not the other guy. You're not a, the other guy, dog. You're not the other guy. And in this case, being Dion, Coach Prime's son, um, and he's quick to come at someone on Twitter if you say anything. The Sanders kid. Oh, yeah. I, I, 
telling you, dog, it's, 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 it's crazy. So he's obviously wants this attention. And it's not about coach. It's not about playing no more. He's not playing no more. Like, look, the, every quarterback, there's, there's been a shitload of – look at Caleb Williams right now. The attention that he's receiving for his off-the-field antics, we'll call him that. I don't care what he does. I really don't. I don't care what he does. Because if he goes out and balls, nobody's going to care about you – know, he'll have he'll have 90% people in his corner. He'll still yeah. have 10% hate. He'll have 90% of his people in his corner defending him if he balls. If he don't ball, though – the cats that do defend him now, although they won't come out and say it, they will be backstabbing him. Mm. Just let me be clear. The 90% of his backers now, if he don't ball, will backstab him. And now will come out and say, I told y'all he wore pink, pink uh, nails and pink phone case. All that shit will come out from his supporters now. Not right. even the hate. And if he don't succeed, then the hate will just be magnified. So... Don't start now, won't be none, dog. I just don't understand that part of this generation. They they can start it all. And then these guys in Arkansas come at me yesterday, but then when I barked back and said, so I, can, I can't have an opinion no more. I don't know what happened to having an opinion. Uh, don't know where that became hate. I, it's an opinion. I don't know how that became hate, uh, but apparently it has. And then when I barked back, though, then I'm I'm everything. I'm fucking this asshole. I'm the devil. But hold on. You literally came at me. I'm a big nose bitch. So if yeah. I go out there and make a video, and I do a video right now about this cat that just called me a big nose bitch. Yeah. I'm the bad guy because I'm mean and bullied. And you, JB, you should have just left it alone. Why should I leave it alone? Because, JB, when you bark back, let's, let's keep it a bang. When you bark back, it's like you... It's like a fucking but Smitty, pit, like you bark. That's my point though, <laughs> don't start none, won't be none. Like I don't get it. So so this is the problem we have right now. So we allow you to do what you want. We allow cats to talk shit. We allow cats to bulls talk whatever they want. But when you bark back too loud, you're the bad guy. Nah, it shouldn't be that way. Cause the, the person who barks first should be the person who, who who's the bad guy. You're just responding, but at the same I mean, time, it, you gotta it, pick and choose who you respond to, JB. You can't respond to everybody because you get a lot I mean, of hate. Here's the, here's the problem that we have. See, this is the problem. I think that there's more dick writers in America in this world than truth tellers. And the mm. dick writers outweigh the truth teller. So when the truth teller says something about your favorite person that you dick ride, mm -hmm. you now call me a hater. So am I a hater or are you just a dick rider with big time goggles on and getting on your fucking knees opening wide? Two That's things, can be, two things can be true, JB. Two things can be true. You can be a hater in some in some instances. And then there's also dick riders. I don't think your comment today about the phone, that's not a hater comment or hater statement. That, that's just a regular, like, that. that's true. That, like, that just a, that, that's an objective thing that you said about the quarterbacks and them having different rules. That's real. But there are certain statements that you make about Colorado that are very subjective and very opinionated. And it's very much, it's said in a way where it comes off as hate. And I'm your boy. I'm just telling you that. Like, I ain't going to lie to you. There's certain that, and I, listen, you go, can't, don't ask me for an example right now. We talk about a lot of topics on the show, and after the show, my fucking brain shuts down. So I have to go back and look and put and pout it. But I, I'm I'm confident I could put together like a 30 minute just reel of all JB stuff you said about Colorado. Let me, let me it, ask you this. Let me ask you this. Yeah, I've been talking about Colorado on my show for mm -hmm. three years because they've been a bad program. For three. Yeah, so they've been a bad program. Because my good friend was there, obviously, and I had three kids there. I had three players there. Chance Main. I had, you know, uh, Delrick Abrams. Yeah. Um, I had players there. So, of course, I'm invested in my players. Why wasn't I a hater the last three years when I said the coaching position there is a joke? And then my boy, DeShevarini, has to be the interim head coach there. I talked about it on this show several times. Well, I can't argue that I wasn't. I wasn't. Why too the was it I a hater then? I I'm, I'm asking the chat. I want to ask everybody. Why was I a truth teller then? But now I'm a hater. 
I want to be clear. But I want, you, I'm asking the question. I'm asking the question to everybody out there. I'm asking the question. I just want to get a question. Smitty, you weren't here, so it's not even relevant to you. I want to know why I was a, not a hater then on a team that went one in ten two years ago with Carl Durrell, who I said is the worst college football coach in the fucking America. Why wasn't I a hater? Why was I a truth teller? Number one. Before that, they won four games, four games, five games, five games. And I said, this program should not be a four-win team. Why was I a truth teller? Why, when I came out and said that my main man in the middle of the night, who just had a staff meeting with my boy Darian Hagan and the staff, Cheverini and others, and said, we are going to stay here. I'm staying. I'm not leaving. And in the middle of the night, Darian Hagen goes to his office, and the head coach's office is cleaned out, and he's now the new head coach at Michigan State. Why was I no hater when I called that a chicken shit move, and that's my boy even. I'm cool with him. We're tight. Now he's facing lawsuit and after the broad and all that. Why wasn't I a hater then? And then why when Mac, Coach Mac, won 10 games two times out of three years, and I said he's doing one of the best jobs in America, I was a dick writer when they won 10 games with Delrick Abrams, who left Indy, goes to Colorado, they go 10 games, they win the Pac-12 South, and I'm a dick rider because I said he's doing the best job in the country at Colorado winning 10 games. So fucking make it make sense, homie. Please make it make sense. I'm going to go back and get the receipts, get the videos. I'm going to show them so all these fucking dick riding fans of Dion in Colorado can look at my receipts for the last three fucking years and talk about, oh, shit. JB been saying this shit about Colorado and everybody's been cool. <laughs> now I'm the hater of all haters, homie, because they won four games. I wasn't here listening to those shows, so I can't tell you exactly, you know, the exact answer you probably want. But I will say this. You said three years. So that means like this year so far, last year, which was Dion's first year. And then the year before that was the the, the old coach. The year before Dion got there, they were one in ten, JB or one in eleven, or whatever they were. They won one game, one in eleven, whatever. So it would make a lot of sense as to why you calling them shitty would bring on no hate because it was like it was right there, like we all like we all saw that they won one game. So it would make sense. So like you, it's hard to you can't really compare that to what you're seeing now. That's number one. Number two, I think. Right now, we don't have a big enough sample size of Dion at Colorado to really go in either direction. I said this yesterday. I, I don't think fans should be saying this motherfucker is the greatest thing since sliced bread, but fans should also shouldn't be saying he sucks and he's shitty. He's a shitty coach. Don't know what he's doing. We don't we don't know enough. You were actually last year, if I'm not mistaken, you were kind of on my side and agreeing that him winning four games was was was, was solid because all things considered all things considered you you, no. you wasn't you wasn't going you wasn't you wasn't saying it was just a shitty ass job by Dion like you wasn't necessarily saying that like you was like all right like I I I you've been you've turned around program so you you've been that situation I think your first year uh at Kansas I think you won you won five games and yeah, then next year you turn you turn things up so like there's, yeah, there's yeah. a process of building yeah, things a up. And I said that. I said he's going to have mercenaries, so this is going to be a, a, process. a process. I didn't think he was going to win a lot of games. Here's the problem. Right. Everybody keeps talking about the year that he took over for. They were one-game winners. Carl yeah. Durrell's, Carl Durrell's last year, they won one game. That matters. Everybody, Everybody's all on this, well, we won one game. They won three more. He's a godsend. No, I see. I see. I said on the show, if you go back and look at it, I said on the show that the last four years, they've literally won four games or more. So take out the one outlier they've lost. By the way, they were 1-11 in twice in the last 12 years. In that program, the last 12 years, they went, they've won one game twice. One in like 2012 mm -hmm. and one two years ago. Other than that, 
They won 10 games twice. They won 4, 4, 4, 5, 5, 1, and 4 with Dion. So I'm trying to figure out why we just go to the one game and then we all we talk about, and then we're saying that he did some amazing job. I ain't saying all that. I, not you. I'm just saying that is the narrative. We we just they basically he won the same amount of games that they've been winning over the last 12 years consistently on a consistent basis. So he basically he basically was par par for the course for his first year. Yes. Par for the court. No, yes. over the last over the last twelve years, he is par for the course in that program. Four wins. That's what right. they win. Right for year so, one. Yes. So we took whole him new taking, team. Whole but let's new, be honest. Right. He took him. We <laughs> dog. Coach Mack won ten games twice. I used to go up there all the time in, in clinic with him. He won two games, ten games twice, and I didn't see him get a percentage of this fucking talk. And he won 10 yeah, games. Well, he's not being not a percentage, yeah. not a percentage. Yeah. But when he lost and everyone talked about he needed to go, it was hate, 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 or it was what? Fact. This fact. He got to go. He won 10 games two years ago. He got to go. So he's got to get out. Nobody tripped. Nobody bitched. Nobody moaned. When I said it on this channel that Max won the best coach in football, he did a hell of a job in Colorado changing that program, blah, blah, blah. Then a dude comes in there. And basically cripples the program by leaving overnight after he tells mm -hmm. the staff I'm staying, goes to Michigan State for a bag. And then I'm sitting there like, okay, Carl Durrell? I don't get that hire. My boy Darren didn't get it either, what, et cetera, whatever. They go through the process there. They tag Cheverini as the interim head coach uh, in between all this. That's how bad it, the program has been. We're going to have Chev come on the show next week. And then – they go out and get prime Deion Sanders, neon mm -hmm. Deion, mm -hmm. and he brings rappers on the sideline. He brings all. He brings stuff. fans. He brings he money. Brings he brings prime games. He brings, he brings everything. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So and then, <laughs> in the year know, one, hey, charging twenty racks to go to a dinner. Hey, yep. get, whatever, right? Yeah. Do you? <laughs> Do you? But that overshadowed the fact, mm -hmm. the fact that they won four games. It don't overshadow it, JB. I just think. We listen on it again. Maybe I'm I'm tripping. I don't remember what we, what we talked about, but I'm pretty sure none of us, other than Matt, went in here thinking they were about to go fucking win eight nine games in year one. That just didn't make sense. He had a whole new team basically. Literally, all the transfers he had, all the players who left, all the Mitty, transfers Mitty, the uh, he brought time in. Out, time out, all time I'm out. saying is that that that's that's insane to don't even, make like, excuses. Don't make excuses for the man that got the roster, homie. Of course, but I'm, I'm saying it's part okay, of the process. So it's a about? process. It's, it's don't, not an excuse. Don't make excuses, it's, 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 it's reality, JB. But it's, reality. it's not an excuse. excuse. You call it an excuse. It's reality. I'm just giving but you a fact of what happened. Don't make excuses for the man who came out and said, I'm gutting this roster. Yes, because the roster won one it game the year before, JB. Of course, I'm gutting it because they were shitty. It don't matter. He doesn't get gutting it. He don't get a pass, homie. I I'm not saying give him a pass. I'm so saying on, it was year one. Did I get a pass for going two and eight my last year? You're no, because it was. I'm oh. glad you brought that up. You know why? Because you went like this, JB. You went up, and then you went down. Unfortunately, don't and you had some off the field stuff. Right, they were wrong, but I'm just saying all mm -hmm. that shit matters. I'm saying it's different when you go up and coming down versus going up. Right now, however you want to slice it, technically speaking, he's trending up. That's what it is. Now, if next year, if next year he goes out there and wins four games again or wins three games and gets worse, trust me, best believe people are going to be calling for his fucking job. But if he goes out there and he wins seven games next year, it's going to keep going up. It's, 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 it's the route in which you, you see it in the NFL all the time with, with guys in their contracts. If, if a young guy, second year guy gets, let's say he's a D lineman, he gets five sacks this season. And then the next year he gets seven. The next year he gets nine. Okay, well, he's going to get that big bag. But let's say he gets nine sacks his rookie year. But in the next year, he gets five. The next year, he gets three. The total might be around the same total. But the fact that he's trending downwards, he's not going to get that same bag, JB. So, again, that matters. Right now, he's trending up. That's, that's what it is. And he, it, again, it's one season. So, like, come on, bro. Like, I, 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 can't, I, can't, I can't crown him or say, like, I mean, what should they do? Take his job away already? Like, I, I don't get what you're. Like, well, I, I don't. I don't get why you go so dramatic. I'm not talking about 
anything about getting him fired. He's starting over and all that. But stop meat riding him as a general public and not make him own the other shit that we see that we're doing a show on every single day because he's out in the limelight every single day putting that target on his players and himself. His staff, his coaching staff, his coaching staff, besides Warren Sapp, okay? Mm -hmm. Besides Warren Sapp, mm -hmm. who's a GA, by the way. Yeah. Who is his staff? Because I'm just telling you, I talk to Division One coaches who think, uh, uh, I'm not going to say what they think because this is not fair. They look at this and they're like, who's his staff? Who wants to coach with Deion Sanders? He had a few Division One guys I knew last year that were good coaches that I knew. And they're no longer there after one year. And then I'm looking at the current staff now. And I'm sitting there like, who are these fucking guys? Who are these fucking guys? Why doesn't anyone want to go coach with him? You why know, no big time you know big Pat Shermer. Why? Why no big, big time? Yeah, and Dion and his daddy played for his daddy. So yeah, look, I'm saying you know, and, 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 and he and he had and he had Zimmer, who's one of the best defensive-minded coaches in the world. Now he got out of there. He's in the NFL. What? Why? Who knows? I'm not saying he he loves Dion. I'm pretty positive on that. So. I think, though, when you love someone as a human and then when you coach with them and find out that this may not be your get down, cat's mass exodus as a professional, as a far, I'm talking in the profession. And I'm not hating or saying anything. I'm saying truly, if you're a power five school with all this fucking money coming in and you have people riddled on the sideline of fame and fortune and you can't get me a legitimate O-line coach that's coaching and been coaching D1, who's a go-getter, a recruiter, and a, 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 a nutty, gutty fucking O-line guy. You can't get me a fucking legitimate D-line coach at a big-time Power 5 school who just broke records on bringing in money. You can't get me a fucking legitimate big-time OC and DC because you're prime, you're Dion. Everyone's been saying you can get whoever you want. Why am I looking at the staff and I don't know any of them? I, I'm looking at him like, why, why the fuck is he not grabbing a cat from Georgia or Bama or why is he not getting somebody that? And I'm sitting there like, there's multiple factors though. There is multiple factors. I'm not saying I'm not. That's I might not want to go to Colorado. I might not want to be under the limelight of prime. That's why I'm not assuming. I'm not assuming. I'm not here to assume. <laughs> exactly. We can't. I don't know. I don't know. But I do know why coaches left. 